بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد Tonight we continue with the Hidayah of Surah Al-Fatiha from the guidance and benefits found in Surah Al-Fatiha Al-Shaykh Abdul Razak Al-Badr Hafidhu Allah Al-Shaykh Abdul Razak Al-Badr Just as a reminder uh, to myself that the statement of Allah Jalla wa in the Qur'an is true, it's the haqq. And if we believe that the kalam of Allah is the truth, then we have to treat it as if we believe it's the truth. And the Prophet of Allah told us in the hadith, in the last days, that knowledge will be removed, ignorance will spread, and murder, murder will also spread, be widespread along with uh, drinking and other things, depending on the narration. And then some narrations say a person will be murdered. They don't know why. They don't even know why they've been killed. The person knows where they're going to die. That this could be, this right here, could be our last sitting with each other. There's nothing preventing, nothing that we can do to prevent this sitting here to be our last sitting. And one of the brothers that we prayed over today, I think Allah, that's what, his brother told me on Saturday, that's how fast it is, his brother told me on Saturday, make dua for my brother because he had a rough day on Friday. It's a Saturday night. Make dua for him because he had a rough day yesterday. Sit, Allah yarham So, I said, Dayyip, let me get his number right now so I can call him. This is 9 o'clock at night. So he gave me his number, and I wanted to call him when I got in the car, but Qadr Allah Mashafar. I didn't. About 10.30 that night, he died. Rahim Allah. That is no guarantee. We don't have no guarantees. As the Prophet said, when we die, all we got is three things. If we don't have children, then that excludes us from one of them. If we do have children, then they will receive what is just and do for them. For Surah Al-Fatiha, to carry the Imam the day of the last and to bring this belief in the hearts of the believers from the observance of this Surah for the times and times in their lives and days. That it reestablishes and makes the belief in the last day firm in a person's heart. If a person understands what it points to and what is understood from those ayat. As Allah chose this ayat, these ayat, this surah, to be read in every salah. No other surah in the Quran do we have to read in every salah. Except for Al-Fatiha. It says, ففي هذه الصورة يقول جل وعلا عن نفسه الله سأز بعض مسافة من الصورة الله سأز مالك يوم الدين مالك يوم الدين مالك يوم الدين and sometimes it's recited مالك يوم الدين مالك يوم الدين without the long without the long alif without the long standing alif سؤال لكم which one is better to recite? Maliki Yomidin or Maliki Yomidin? Both are permissible, the Jews. Why? Why? That's the question. Why? The Prophet said in the Hadith that for every letter, this 
Madik Yomidin, the master or the ruler of the day of judgment. Yani Malik Yom Al Hisab Al Iqab. That Allah is the owner of the day of Hisab, when every person will be held accountable for what they did. Al Hisab Al Iqab. That day of punishment for those who will be punished. Mujazi Nas. He is the one that will reward the people and give them what they deserve based on their actions. Based on their actions. Allah is a dayan. Yani the one who gives the reward for the actions. So he says Al Fatiha. قررت هذا الأصل العظيم في قوله تبارك وتعالى مالك يوم الدين that that belief is instilled and reaffirmed over and over again just by the recitation of that ayat the ruler the owner of that day that day when we have to stand before Allah that Allah is in total control and He will reward everyone for those who are to be rewarded and those who will be punished will be punished. فَإِنَّ مِنْ تَمَامِ حَمْدِ اللَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى أَلَّذِي صُدِّرَتْ بِهِ هَذِهِ الصُّورَةِ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ الْعِبَادِ وَيُجَازِيهِمْ وَيُثِيبَ مُضِيعَهُمْ أَعْظَمَ الثَّوَابِ وَأَفْضَلُ الْجَزَاءِ That from the completeness and praise of Allah جَلَّ وَعَلَى that on that day that Al-Fatiha started out with is as he says here, the surah starts off with the praise of Allah. And that Allah will raise the people Yom Qiyamah and they will be rewarded for their actions. Uh, the greatest reward, Adam al Thawab. And this is why, well, they have the Ahl al Jannah, the people of Jannah, Allah, the one who guided us to this, to think that they're going to say when they enter paradise, Ahl al Jannah. وَمَا كُنَّا And then they're going to say وَمَا كُنَّا لَنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ And if it wasn't for Allah guiding us, we wouldn't have been guided. So the first thing I want to say upon into Jannah Paradise Alhamdulillah أَلَّذِي هَدَانَ لِهَانَ All praises for Allah, the one who guided us to this. Put us on the path to Paradise. If it wasn't for Him guiding us, then we would have not been guided. He says, فَمَنْ فَمَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ فِي حَيَاتِهِمْ الدُّنْيَا بِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ وَلْهِ دَعِلِ الْإِيمَانِ So in the dunya, Allah blessed those people with to be upon obedience, to be upright people on obedience to Allah Jalla wa'ala, to have iman in Allah Jalla wa'ala in this life. وَمَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ يَوْمًا لِقْنِيَامًا بِدُخُولِ جَنَّتِهِ And He blessed them that يَوْمُ قِيَامًا that they will enter into his parallel choosing us to be guided, then we would not have reached this uh, paradise. Allah says after that, Rabbil Alameen. And He says, In this is the establishment or the reestablishment of this principle again the belief in the last day. So He derives from the Right? How is this? The end of Rabbil Alameen. The Lord of everything. He is the one in control of everything. And from his control, of this of the dunya, of everything, is the fact that he has prepared for those who obey him a great reward, paradise. From his control is that he's already prepared the Jannah for those who are obedient and upright. Severe, severe, serious punishment. And this is why he says, 
after he says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, he says, Maliki Yawm Al-Deen. Famuti Allah, Na'il Rahmatullah, wa Thawabah. That the one who is obedient to Allah Jalla Wa'ala, then this person has earned Allah's mercy. This person has earned Allah's mercy. Wal-Asi Na'il Sakhat Allah, wa Iqabi. Well, in the disobedient person, they have earned the anger of Allah and the punishment. So people are broken into two types. Either a person is mutir or asim. Either a person is obedient or disobedient. Either a person is from the people. In the statement of Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. The Lord of the worlds. And from that, is that Allah is the total controller of. He says, and this is why Allah mentioned uh, in Surah Al-Layl, that Allah, Tabarqa wa Ta'ala, and Naar fil Quran, that the Prophet, as Allah said, does not speak from his own desires, and the Sunnah has a high. With Islam and called them to Islam, this is when they started to give them these names and call them these names. He says, The one who denies the message or the messages and the one who turns away from the commands, they're not like the people. They're not the same as Ahl Iman, the people who have Iman and believe in Allah Jalla Wa'ala. They're not like the people. As he says, Ahl Ta'a, those who obey Allah Jalla wa and those who seek Allah's help, they're not the same. And for this reason, in Al Fatiha wa Kadalika, Al Qisma, Al Thulathiya, Lihal al Nas, Lihal al Nas, wa Lati Khutimat Biha, a Surah. Tayyip. He just said that, in Salaam Tala, he said that the people are broken into two groups, right? People are broken into two groups. Ahl al Jannah or Ahl al Nah. Now he says there's a third breakdown. People are broken into three groups. Mumkin. Can people be broken into two groups and broken into three groups? Huh? Is it possible? Maybe. It's possible. What are the three groups mentioned in Sultan the Fatima? Those who went astray, those who learned his anger. Those who huh? those on the straight path. Three groups and not fancy. Those who number one are on the straight path. It says Guide us to the straight path, that dua. Now the first group, Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alayhim. Those who your favor is upon. Though that's one group. They're guided. Allah's favor is upon them and they're guided. The second group, Aghayr al Madhubi Alayhim. So the first group, those who Allah guided. This Mun'am, Mun'am Alayhim. وهم أهل الإيمان وأهل الصراط المستقيم. That the one who worshiped Allah جل وعلا from Tawheed and then the one who committed shirk, they're gonna end up in the same place. Sahih. But if he if he does that, then he becomes from the other people. You with me? Huh? Then he becomes the first group. Right? If he makes Toba, if a person makes Toba from Shib putting partners with Allah, then they become from the first group, the rightly guided group. But if they don't, if they die worshiping other than Allah, is it possible that the reward is the same in the Afila? La. It says that Hasha Allah, Hasha, Abidan. It's not possible. 
Because those who are on the straight path, said on the Mustaqim, that they have a destination, and those who went away from the straight path, they have a destination. They have a destination, therefore, Anas, Kisman, Firitan, two groups. Some going to paradise, some going to the hellfire. Right? So, Assalamu alaikum. Now he speaks about Yom al Akhir and how in the Quran, Lahu Asma un Kathira Jaat Afir Quran. Ta'addad al Asma, Yadullah ala Tanawar al Sifat. The different names, there is many names for Yom al Qiyamah, and that's one of them mentioned in the Quran. There's a lot of different names for the last day mentioned in the Quran. One of them is the last day, Yom al -Akhir. that's one name. And the point of the different names, he says, Ta'adad al Asma, the name, each name points to an event that will happen Yom al Each name, the different names for Yom al -Qiyamah. each name is connected to some event that will happen on Yom al the hour. Right? All of these, as he says, the Hasid al Osaf al Lati According to the name, according to something or an event that will happen on Yom Qiyam, on the last day. Well, Min Jumat had it as Huh? One of those names of the last day is mentioned in Al Fatiha. Said the day of reward and punishment. That some people will be punished, some people will be rewarded. Yom Adin, Yom Jazah, the day of recompense, that everybody will receive exactly what they're entitled to, was fair, that nobody will be done oppressed or no, no, no injustice will be done, but every person will receive exactly what they deserve. And this belief huh? from the pillars of Islam is belief in the last day. Oh, Everybody Everybody says Sahih. From the pillars of Iman. Belief in the last day. From the pillars of Iman, belief in the last day. We cannot have doubt in any of the pillars. Starting with Al Iman Billah. Belief in Allah Jalla. A person can't have doubt in their belief in Allah. Likewise, the rest of the pillars of Iman. That there is no doubt with La Shaq that they believe wholeheartedly with certainty in Allah Jalla and in the angels, and in the books, and in the messengers, in the Qadr, and the Yom al -Afiyah. That a person can't even be a Muslim without believing in these pillars, the pillars of Iman. So what if they have doubt? He says, وَمَنْ شَكَّ فِي يَوْمِ الدِّينِ كَفَى Whoever has doubt in the last day, then they have disbelieved. As Allah said, قَالَ تَعَالَ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا Allah said in Surah Al-Hujurat, Indeed, the believers are those who believe in Allah and in, the and in His Messenger. And after that, they don't have any doubt. They don't have any doubt. That they have certainty in their belief. They certainly have believe in it with all certainty, with no doubt. With no doubt. He says, That a person has to have complete belief with tasdiq. But thiqa or i'tiqad and the aqeedah, their belief has to be without any shadow, as we say, without a shadow of a doubt. No cracks, no holes. And this is from the pillars of Iman, from the pillars, the basic, basic belief of a Muslim. That a person can't be a Muslim without believing these things.
that there's a last day that we all have to answer for and stand before Allah Jalla Ala. He says, Hunaka Yom Deen. There's a day of recompense, a day of reward, where everybody will give, get what they deserve. That for the believer, we have to know and understand that every step that we go through in this life, every step that we take, it puts us a step closer to the last day, and it puts us a step further from this dunya. With every step, that's another days. We were happy when the days would go by. But every day that went by, it means we were closer to our death. And this is the statement of Ali ibn Abi Talib, where he said that the dunya, the, the dunya and the hereafter, they have uh, children. Be from the people of the hereafter. And don't be from the people of the dunya. Because the time for actions are now. The time to clean up is now. As when we die, we don't have that luxury of piling up good deeds, doing whatever we could do to try to secure a place in Jannah by Allah's mercy. So he said, Right now, today, is the time for actions, and there is no reckoning. He says, is the time of recompense to be judged. There's no chance for actions once a person dies. That's it. There's no more. Whatever we did, that's what we have to show for Yom al -Qiyam. It says, and if you look, between 60 to 70 years. Some people live a little longer. Some people die early. Generally. For the Jumla. He says for the Jumla. Lakin for the Jumla. A'mar al-Ummah. Bayna sitin wa sabreen. The lifespan of most people between 60 to 70 years. Tayyip. He says, that's generally how long a person will be in this world. You see it yourself. It's been 30 years. Tayyip. In obedience to Allah Jalla Allah. Even though that doesn't count, all right, if you accept the Islam late, I say out of 30 years, they had 15 years in Islam. They accepted the Islam, and they had 15 years in. Huh? Generally, the first couple of years, except for those who Allah has mercy on, uh, a person struggling to pray all five. It might take a person five years to pray all five. You down to 10, just on a salat. But we don't have time. We don't have time. That's assuming that we live to be 60, which is not a guarantee. But that's the equation that he brings down that we don't have time. Whatever we think, whatever time we think we have, we don't have it. 15 off huh? <laughs> puberty, another 15, 16 off of being asleep. If we reach 60 years, we got about 30 years. Allah, Allah give us tawfiq to be upright and obedient in those 30 years. Compare those 30 years, if you had 30 years, those 30 years to what Allah says, Yom Yagifuna fi Yom Kana Mikdaruhu Khansina Al Fasana. If you compare those 30 years to a day where Allah says, it is like Khamsina al Sana. 50,000 years. 30 years in this life compared to Yom Kiyama, which is seen like 50,000 years. 
هيه الله مستعان. We worry about 